Hello, my wonderful students, to a new topic in math. Our topic for this year is going to be, we're going to start it with topic number one about place value. Take two minutes. Think, what does place value mean? Fantastic job. When I talk about place value, I am talking about the value of that number. Let's get started. If I have the following number in front of you, 123. When I say the number 123, you can hear the word, repeat the number, 123. One stands for the hundreds, two stands for the tens, and three stands for the ones. Let's go back. When I say one, I am talking about the hundreds place value. I am talking about 100. When I say two, I'm talking about the tens, which is 20. And when I talk about three, I am actually talking about the ones, three. So one, 100, two, 20, three, ones. So the whole number becomes 123. It is going to be the first lesson that we are going to be taking in our new topic, place value. Let's go to our next lesson. When we talk about our next lesson, we're going to be talking about relationships between place value. So when I talk about the ones, I'm actually talking about the number one, the value of the number ones. Tens, tens, hundreds, hundreds, 1,000, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. The relationship between one number to another. So when I say the number one, that does not mean I am saying tens. I am talking about the number one. Let's go back to actually putting it into real life situation. When I talk about me giving my friend a one JD, is it the same thing when I give my friend a 10 JD? No. A one JD has a value of one and 10 JDs is a value of 10. For sure, you can buy more items that you have from 10 than you do have for 1. Okay, let's go to our next lesson, which I think a lot of us would like it. Okay. Okay. We have comparing numbers. When I compare numbers, I use something called the alligator, uh, alligator hand. Now, let's have our hands ready. When I have my hands ready, when I have the alligator, always remember this rule, and I keep on telling my class every single year, the alligators love to eat big numbers. They love to eat what? Fantastic. Big numbers. So when I have my hands open, imagine that this is the mouth of an alligator. It only eats big numbers. So when I have the number one, and I have the number one over here, and two over here, where does my alligator mouth open? Amazing job, because it always likes to eat the bigger number, which is the number two. So always remember the most important rule, where alligators like to eat the big, big, big numbers. Okay, now let's go to the next one. We have the alligator sign, as we said. Only eats, perfect job, the big numbers. They only tend to eat big numbers. Always remember, when I talk about comparison, I am talking about the less than, the greater than, and then the equal sign. When I say equal, I am saying when the two numbers that are next to you have the same value. So if I have the number 10 and I have the number 10, I will have the comparison sign of equal. Perfect job. Then our next lesson that we're going to be taking is rounding numbers. Rounding numbers is considered to be a very, very, very easy lesson. The same thing, it has one rule. If my number that is underlined, you look to the number that's next. You have an example in front of you, 152. And I tell you, you know what, my, my students, I want you to round the number one. What do I do? Rule number one, I always look to the number that's after it. What's after it grade four? amazing job. What's after it is a number five. So the rule is if my number is five and above, I round the underlined digit up. If 
the number after the underlying digit is four and below, I keep the underlying digit the same. Again, I'm going to repeat it again. We're going to go into details with our lesson when I talk about it. I repeat, if my number that is underlined, I look at the number that's underlined, first of all. If the number after it is five and above, I round up the underlying digit. I, un I round up the underlying digit. If my number is four and below, I keep my underlying digit the same. So let's go to the number 152. When I talk about 152, what am I actually going to round? I said, as I just said before, the number one. So let's start with the first step that I just said. I look at the number five. My number goes to the rule of five and above. The one becomes, fantastic job, the one becomes two. So I am going to be rounding it above. So it becomes 200. If my number was four and below, I would have kept it the same and kept it as 100. Okay? Don't worry, we will go into details with it in our next lessons when we get started with them. Okay? Let's go up. There's the same rule as I just said. Rounding up, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Round down, which we actually say we keep it the same, Four, three, two, one, zero. So again, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always round up what the underlying digit, and I round or I keep it the same of four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. So over here, it tells you to round twelve thousand four hundred and thirty-three to the nearest hundred. So I have the underlying digit as a four. I always look ahead of it, which is three. I always keep it the same. So it becomes 12,400, as you can see in the end. You always, first of all, find the hundreds place, then go to the next door. So you knock to the next door, you look at it. If the number is four or less, let it rest. Five or more, you, you, what do you do? You increase the value, okay? So you add one to that value itself. Okay, you have a timeline over here, 12 becomes 10, 66 becomes 70. And I hope that you guys will enjoy your unit. Believe me, it's going to be a very, very, very fun unit. Love you all. Take care.